thank you everyone for being here today, um, our panelists as well as um, everyone else. As far as our panel goes, we have representation from several roles within Farm to School, and uh, we're just glad that all of you are here today. We're going to have about 45 minutes for content, and then we're going to reserve the last 15 minutes of the webinar for Q&A. However, anytime, you know, maybe you don't want to forget your question or you want to go ahead and get it, you can pop it into the chat if that's uh, more comfortable for you to do. We're happy to take questions that way as well. Um, Anne has posted, like I said, Anne has posted the uh, toolkit, the link to both the Virginia Farm to School toolkit as well as the USDA Farm to School kit, and they are in the chat. So right now we're going to do um, some panel introductions, and I'm going to start. My name is Janelle Smith, and I am a SNAP-Ed agent with Virginia Cooperative Extension and the Family Nutrition Program. And my role in Farm to School is I am a member of the state program team, as well as, as a SNAP-Ed agent. We provide nutrition education to the schools which reinforces the importance of eating, you know, farm to school produce and other products. And so we're just gonna, I'm gonna call on everyone in the panel, just a quick introduction, your name, your organization and your role to your role in farm to school. So Anne, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Certainly, Anne Vargo. I've been with the Family Nutrition Program since 2010 and I uh, cover the greater Richmond area. I'm currently doing a as I had mentioned earlier, uh, some of you, uh, some of you all may not have been on yet, but doing a lot, a lot of work in Petersburg with the school system, with well, with with PHOPs, um, which is uh, uh, um, partnerships for um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm trying to blank on it, but um, anyhow, we're a collaborative through the CDC that we are are uh, forming a lot of uh, partnerships to create a better Petersburg, a healthier Petersburg, with better food access, um, better knowledge of healthy eating and healthy food and, and being able to make healthy food choices. Um, so I'm real glad to be here today. Awesome. All right. Joanne, if you'd introduce yourself, your name, organization, and your role in Farm to School, please. All right, my name is Joanne Jones and I'm the Agricultural and Natural Resources Agent in Charlotte County. And I work with the Southside Virginia Fruit and Vegetable Producers Association, which is a group of farmers, and I help them to make connections to sell to many markets, and one of which is farm to school. And I also work with Janelle and um, Amber Vallotton with the farm to school stuff and Gap, and just making connections with the producers in the markets. Thank you. Devin, will you introduce yourself, please? Sure thing. Hi, everybody. I am Devin Byrne. I am the Farm to School uh, Account Manager at 4P Foods. Uh, 4P Foods is a uh, local food hub wholesale distributor where we um, prioritize sourcing from our local and regional farms. Um, so we work with over work with hundreds of farms and uh, help bring their produce to schools and other um, customers. And um, Thank you. And we have a few school nutrition directors um, in the meeting. Beth, would you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Beth Morris, and I'm the director of school nutrition for Lynchburg City Schools, uh, a predominantly urban um, school division with 20 feeding sites uh, and um, just under 8,000 students. Um, and uh, my role in farm to school has been um, a purchaser of um, of locally grown um, produce, uh, we have not um, been purchasing any proteins at this at this point, but um, have worked collaboratively with 4P um, in a pilot program um, through the Virginia Department of Education. Um, have a um, relationship with our primary distributors, uh, making sure that they identify local produce that is available for us to purchase, um, as well as I have a, um, a contract with a local uh, grower of um, lettuce, and uh, that grower is supplying all of our secondary schools um, with the majority of uh, romaine lettuce that we're using in our, um, in our salads here in the school division. Thank you. Amanda? 
Hi, I'm from Stanton City Schools. I'm the school nutrition director, and I've been a school nutrition director for eight years and have been in Stanton City Schools for eight years. And my role in farm to school is um, also as a procurer of local goods, but we also wrap a lot of nutrition education and enrichment programs around our farm to school um, so that we widen the breadth of food um, access and also food education and food system education. Thank you. Sandy? Uh, I'm from Petersburg City Schools. Um, we have eight schools. We are also in the pilot program with 4P and trying to get more fresh, and fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables into our school. We also work with our local produce provider um, and um, occasionally I work with Ann and PHOP in Petersburg. Great, thank you. So that's a good segue into uh, Petersburg. Fancy, would you introduce yourself, please? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fancy Terrell. My pronouns are they, them. I'm the local project director for PHOPs, and I'm also the coordinator for HCAT. Um, I kind of, I'm a, I'm a puzzler by hobby, and I feel like that's a big part of my work um, here in Petersburg. It's just kind of helping um, as we all work towards filling in the puzzle pieces of meeting um, the intersections of public house, um, public um, public health issues, and as well as the social determinants of health. So very excited to be here with you all. Thank you. Tyrone? Peace, peace, everyone. I'm Tyrone Cherry the third. Um, I represent the Petersburg League of Urban Growers, aka The Plug. Uh, we manage a few green spaces in the city of Petersburg, uh, most recently the Petersburg Oasis Youth Farm. Um, it's a farm that's dedicated to introducing the youth in, uh, in an engaging and entertaining way um, to agriculture. So we're trying to educate them as well as empower them through experience. Um, and we're focusing on STEAM. And we added, um, instead of just art, A being art, we added agriculture. And M is for math, but also mindfulness as well. So I'm an educator 20 plus years, taught in all eight of those schools that Ms. Stokes spoke about. Um, so we're excited about getting those same scholars from those uh, schools over here to the farm. So we kind of represent the school to farm aspect of it. Thank you. And Brendan. Hi, yeah, um, I'm Brendan Jackson. I'm one of uh, two farm assistants with uh, PHOPs. And, uh, you know, if it involves kids, uh, dirt, curriculum, or moving heavy things, uh, I'm your guy. <laughs> Thanks so much. I think all of us wear more than one hat, um, but those are our panelists. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, this is just a quick example of farm to school. And I will point out that, um, you know, we're, we're used to saying farm to school and we certainly, that's where a bulk of our work is. But these students were actually part of um, the Boys and Girls Club. Sometimes Boys and Girls Clubs are in the school, sometimes they're not, in this case they are. Um, but connecting with community youth in many groups can be another way to, um, you know, give them um, the experience of learning how to plant, grow, and eat healthy foods. Um, and by involving them in that, help them to um, perhaps, I mean, to have a, a healthier, um, to eat healthier, and to also be able to, um, you know, possibly be interested in being a farmer. So this is just a quick little example of farm to school. The students here are engaging with myself on a food demonstration, but they're also um, engaging in some mindfulness activities as well. Next slide. Okay. Um, and farm to school provides a rich opportunity for young people experiencing learning, growing, tasting, and cooking um, local produce, and also physical activity. There's a physical activity component that's really, really important to consider with um, so many um, iPads and phones and, and um, you know, things that um, focus our mind on, on um, sedentary acti activities. Uh, it can also attract young people to consider careers in agriculture, uh, which I think is something that Tyrone is really um, um, engaging in doing. Uh, and this is important as the average uh, age of farmers continues to climb. Um, farm school also provides a connection between schools and local producers to not only enhance meals served and um, uh, served to the students, but also provide more healthy options and engage with the agri and help the students um, and the staff and, and, um, and folks within the school to engage with the agricultural aspect of their local community. Um, 
Students gain access to healthy local foods as well as educational opportunities such as school gardens. We're seeing a lot of school gardens across the state now. And, um, uh, and it, school gardens are starting to involve, you know, traditionally master gardeners help support that, extension helps support, help support that, but a lot of other groups are um, jumping on to help support local gardens. And we're really seeing that if we get kids involved in growing, they're more liable to, uh, to be willing to eat these healthier options. Field trips to local farms, um, as we saw in, the, in that first picture there. So this is what we're talking about, just engaging the kids, school kids, as well as community youth in learning more about um, growing, healthy eating, um, to really uh, enlarge their options and um, um, you know, um, allow them to contribute more to their community in a meaningful way. Thank you. I saw Tyrone nodding his head when we were talking about farm tours. <laughs> so this is a short list of, you know, possible potential partners for farm to school um, in the different areas, but certainly not a comprehensive list. There are always people, you know, that come to you that don't fit in, you know, in the certain mold. So just being open to those possibilities, but thinking about, you know, we have several school nutrition directors on the meeting today. We might also have staff administrators, you know, parents, grandparents, teachers, and producers. So not just, you know, we think of farmers as being producers, but also farmers markets or fishermen, ranchers, or even the Virginia Cooperative Extension Master Gardeners. And then there's all different types of nutrition uh, individuals, whether they're with the health department or where they're with, um, you know, health care professionals, health providers, and then thinking about this group of others that can go on and on, but potential partners like the YMCA or your local parks and rec or local chefs, um, researchers, if you're affiliated with the university. So lots of potential partners um, listed here. All right, without uh, further ado, We'll go into structures, roles, and responsibilities. So this is just thinking about, you know, how to structure starting out building your farm to school team. You know, do you need a formal needs assessment? Um, do you need a formal organization, like a standalone organization, or can you just be part of an existing organization? Thinking about roles, who's responsible for what, what different, you know, from what different groups do you need representation, and then who's going to do what, and then being mindful to set goals that are uniformly agreed upon, being able to track that progress, and then ultimately evaluate it to see, you know, what went well, what do we need to improve upon for the next time, and this is all in the kit, so I don't want to belabor these points. Um, and I wanted, did want to have plenty of time to get to the questions. So we'll just go through these questions one at a time, and then panel members can chime in with their answers. And um, if you have a question, feel free to hold on to it or pop it in the chat, and then we will get to it. I promise. All right. Well, let's start out with the first question. Um, for those of you who are doing farm to school, can you please share with us how did you assemble your team and who were those key partners? Um, I guess I'll start off. This is fancy. Um, so for the farm to school team, I think I, I had to think about the end result that would be in line with what our goals were that our HCAT collectively expressed for the goals. And that was to have um, that was to have a farm to school program that truly reflected the conditions that our students were challenged by and also encouraged by. So hey, Nancy, now, real quick, I'm um, pardon the interruption, but could you explain what HCAT is just in case people don't course. know? Thanks. Yes, I'm so sorry. So HCAT is an acronym for the Healthy Community Action Team. Um, this is a project that is sponsored by the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth. If you all remember a few years ago, Big Tobacco um, had a huge settlement, and this is where a portion of that money goes towards. And in our particular HCAT, our mission was to start off by um, improving and increasing the access to healthy fruits and vegetables for um, these little people that we serve. The Pit holes that the some of the um, pitfalls that we saw or some of the missing pieces, um, I should say uh, more articulately, were that 
while the program was really great information and it was exposing our students to agriculture skills and nutrition skills, it wasn't speaking directly to the other social barriers that comes to healthy fruits and vegetables. And it also left room for improvement for critical thinking from all participants, facilitators, students, as well as parents about some of the environmental factors that go towards this program being in such need of in general. So um, when thinking about who would be some of the team members and who would be some of the key partners, we had to think critically about what do, this, what do we learn from the social determinants of health in our area? And also who is not at the table that is in our community that should be reflected in our leadership structure? Do you mind adding who your key partners are, Fancy? Sure. Yeah. So Ann Vargo is, is an amazing champion. Our friends at VCE, of course. Um, our partners at the Petersburg Public Library continue to grow in partnership with us. We found so many ways to link um, the library and some of the wraparound services that are already there to some of the immediate needs that we have for the program. Um, Petersburg Public Schools is a great partner for us. We found partnership with local businesses. Um, Resist Books is a recently opened black owned business that we found really great partnership with. Virginia State University, um, Southside Trauma Informed Care Network. Um, we, uh, Petersburg Symphony, <laughs> it's been really interesting um, the different types of partnerships we've been able to find by kind of um, just letting go of some of the preconceived notions of what needed to be in that program and some of the things that we are so, you know, so indoctrinated in us as community workers going to those same sources over and over again. We're really trying to be creative with the partnerships that we're making and figuring out ways that we can um, some of the we, ways that we can fill some of the gaps that are created naturally in this type of work. So you definitely represent a large farm to school organization. I have, yes. Lots of partners. Yeah, I'm very happy to say we do. Um, of um, nonprofit to for-profit, um, we've been able to create like a really nice cross-section of people to work together. That's awesome. Thank you. Would anybody else like to... Um... Talk about your team. I'd like to add to what Fancy said about those unique partnerships, if that would be okay. So, you know, as a, as a, as a school system and a, and a school program, farm to school looks a little different than what Fancy's doing um, in her neck of the woods. But um, for me, I think unique partnerships like using our local police department in our, in our summer meals programs to help support our farm to school enrichment was, you know, a, a, a very unique partnership. I have partnerships with an um, environmental organization, uh, Shenandoah Green, who helped also support our farm to school enrichment program in the summer. Um, and it's, a, again, it's a unique partnership that maybe it's sort of an outside the box type thing you might not consider. Um, we also have a strong partnership with our library. We've partnered with our local health department to have um, our summer meal sites at their WIC clinics. Um, so there's tons of ways to, to look into your community and to find these additional support mechanisms. Again, like to, um, to piggyback on, on what Fancy's saying, like just you got to think outside the box. You got to sort of just ask and be prepared to, you know, just hear no and then move on and find someone else that will help support your cause. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And thinking about most of us, you know, are working in our communities and we know our communities. And so we know those people that are going to be our champions and our advocates. And maybe it doesn't look like what fits into our previous slide, right? Thinking outside the box. Thank you for that. Yeah, and we can um, add to that too, what, what Fancy was speaking of as well as um, uh, Sister Amanda. It's our organization, well, our youth farm sits on a community farm, so it's a five-acre incubator farm for Black, Indigenous, uh, people of color who are interested in growing and getting their enterprise growing. So you know, what Anne was speaking of earlier, of having those partnerships with the farmers, that exists right here. So we, we developed the youth space as a reflection of that adult space, right? We're talking about getting younger farmers into agriculture. Well, why not start with them at school age, give them the hands-on experience? have them mentored by local farmers who look like them, grow in the same place and conditions they'll be growing in, um, and give them that, that um, opportunity and that experience. And that's grown to us just getting more and more community partners based on what our intention and what our mission is. So um, we've uh, just recently had 23 students who certif certified as Junior Master Gardeners. They did a 10-week program here. 
Um, and that was through, you know, Ms. Ann Vargo introducing us to that program, that curriculum, as well as her coming through, like you saw in the picture, and doing the food demo. So, you know, partnerships like that not only, um, you know, make it possible, but they grow, you know, they grow the program. Um, and then we've also partnered with parents. So um, we've had youth come through and parents have said, hey, I love what's going on. I can offer this. This is my passion. This is my skill set. Um, so just two weeks ago, we had a do-it-yourself bird feeder experience. That was um, that was initiated by a parent who came and said, hey, we can put bird feeders here, and I know how to make them. So she ended up teaching a class on Saturday to a group of 20 students about how to, you know, how to make bird feeders. So um, that whole thinking outside the box, reaching outside the box, um, we're talking about urban ag in our specific situation. So that's what we're, we're talking about is being outside the box. It also play, comes into play when you're talking about uh, developing relationships, you know, community partners. May it be local organizations or just uh, members of the community. And it's, it's, um, it's really inspiring to see how many people are interested in helping out and things like this. They just looking for an opportunity. Thank you for sharing that. I think you you got you you have brought up some good points about like benefit byproducts here. Maybe something that you didn't intentionally think would happen that happened. You know, certainly increasing the knowledge of where your food comes from to children is is important and valuable and reinforces that that need to eat, you know, to eat these foods that are they're important to you. Thank you very much. Would anybody like to comment on how, is your team complete? Do you feel like you have all the components that you need um, in your team? And if not, what do you, what additions do you need? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll address that, um, Janelle. Um, as a uh, school division that is predominantly in an urban setting, um, it, we do have those challenges to, and I am predominantly involved in school nutrition, in um, farm to school as a uh, purchaser of, of um, of foods, locally grown foods to serve to our kids in all the child nutrition programs that we participate in. Um, the National School Lunch Program, suppers through the Child and Adult Care Food Program, and then a very um, robust summer food service program. Um, obviously living in uh, Virginia, um, you know, the, the, the natural growing season um, is you know, spring into uh, late summer, early fall. Um, so we have a much easier time um, uh, procuring um, locally grown items. Also, they have an appeal to children. Um, there are certain things that we can grow in Virginia, which you know, I, I have to say, you know, sweet potatoes um, and, uh, and um, um, you know, greens are not the we do serve them. They're not the most popular items and not something that we can um, really overload our menus with. But obviously in the spring and summer when we start to get the fruits um, and the cucumbers and, and the tomatoes and such, we really do um, look to have those be uh, highlighted on our menus uh, and also highlight the farmers um, that are, um, are, are providing those um, for us. Um, but the uh, the team isn't complete, and the team I can't say um, you know will necessarily ever be complete, as we are always looking for um, a new grower um, that wishes to partner with us. And I would say, uh, and in my experience with Farm to School, having come from a rural setting when I was the director in Nelson County and had those um, uh, farms that were right in the backyard of the of the school division. Um, I am always looking for that, um, you know, for that grower and um, looking for individuals such as 4P, um, such as our distributor, such as the workshop that um, you all put on and that we were able to avail ourselves of to meet those farmers and to make those personal connections and, 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 grow, from, and grow from there. And um, that has been my experience. There doesn't seem to be a, um, a textbook or a manual on how to develop those relationships. In my experience, it's been much more being in the right place at the right time, availing yourself to opportunities um, where you can be introduced to those, um, those individuals that can help you um, uh, increase uh, your, um, you, just to expand that vision. Um, and so I just don't see that team ever necessarily um, being fully developed. I will agree with Beth. Um, this is Sandy from Petersburg. Um, the 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 missing piece is getting the actual schools teamed up with the farmers. Um, 
and there has to be some go between for that the farmers don't have necessarily the means to do that the schools don't have the necessarily means so that's the missing piece right there and if we could somehow get that piece in place i think um farm to school would really take off. I mean, we're we're doing a good job now, but I think it could really, really take off at that point. Thank you for sharing that perspective, Sandy. Um, because right, school nutrition directors are very busy. Farmers are very busy. So what, in your opinion, what would that look like? What Would that person be employed by the school system? Would that be someone perhaps from Virginia Cooperative Extension or from a, a farmer, co co you know, collaborative? What What are your thoughts on that? Well, personally, I think it would not be somebody from the school system and it wouldn't be from the farmer side. I think it has to be somebody that knows both segments, which is a hard piece to find. Um, we in the school district, we don't mind paying a little more for local produce, but we have to make it um, financially viable for the farmers out there. Farmers have to, and we have to have it viable that the produce can come to us or well, the products can come to us in a certain way that makes sense for the schools. And I think that's the piece. And, you know, maybe Virginia Extension, maybe it's a, a, a different organization. But that's the piece, I think that's the key piece that we are desperately in need of that would help this just explode. Devin, you, do you have any comments on that? Yes, um, I think that, um, you know, as a food hub, our, our key partners are exactly what Sandy just mentioned is like providing that link between our growers and our um, school nutrition directors and the schools and the children. Um, while also, you know, she brings up a great point is that it needs to be viable for the grower. And that's where, you know, 4P Foods, that is our mission is to, to pay the farmer a fair price while still dealing with our, you know, distribution um, costs. And that's what I would say is like what we still need as our team grows. Um, would be, you know, what are some st strategic partnerships in the delivery? Um, do we need more trucks, drivers? We've been working on creating brand new routes just so we can expand our reach to school divisions. Um, and as some of you on the call know, that's been, um, that's been a big lift for us, an exciting lift, but we've reached out to partners um, that are further away to help us with last, min uh, last mile delivery so that we can deliver the food in the way that you need it, that's convenient, whether that's to your central hub, whether that's directly to all the schools. So um, yeah, as we're looking at being that connector, it really is like, how can we expand our, our reach and, and how can we also um, bring on more producers? You all mentioned it's like, I know there are Virginia farms here. Um, how do we reach them? And that is what our our team at 4P does, our procurement team, our buyers, we are always looking to add producers that meet those food safety requirements um, and, and add those to our network to increase the supply, to increase the resiliency of our local supply, um, and also make sure they're growing things that the schools can use and in a form that they can use. So um, those would be my initial comments. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your comments on that question. Um, how much time, like, well, how much time did it take? Let's, let's say to get the initial team together, because as we've just stated, the team is constantly evolving. People are coming in, going out, you know, roles are changing. So if anybody would like to comment on how much did it time, how much time did it take to get that initial team together? Well, the initial team was me. So that didn't take any time at all. Um, yeah, again, I think probably from you know, Sandy and Amanda's um, uh, viewpoint, um, you know, the director uh, ultimately has the at least an hour um, size school divisions, um, you know, larger ones that they have probably more division of, of responsibilities um, that, that may compartmentalize um, procuring um, you know, foods and supplies, but I am directly responsible, um, you know, for, for that. So, 
um, making the decision to um, focus on and commit to uh, local um, purchases when um, available and when I am aware of them came from me. Um, now building a team from that, I mean, and, th and that process started without there being another individual in the room, um, but building that team that could help support that and grow that and make that feasible, um, you know, that, that, as I said, continues to, continues to happen. Um, as people present themselves. Uh, I do want to tell a, a, a pretty neat little success story in that after the meeting that we held, um, the regional meeting um, that was held here at Miller Park, um, one of the farmers and I uh, had follow-up. And from there, I was able to connect him with two distributors, um, commercial distributors that I work with. And it does look like um, uh, he will, and their farm will be able to um, uh, get distribution for through these commercial um, distributors, uh, and so that you know there, it's those types of um, opportunities to interact um, and just to you know to talk with each other and to make those connections um, that I think are are really essential um, and uh, and and vital to uh, the growth of this um, of this movement. Thank you, Beth. Would anybody else like to comment on the time? I would say for our group, and this is Joanne from Charlotte County, it it probably took more like three to six months. So once the producers realized and they wanted to try to go this angle, we worked with VSU. VSU came in, we set up a farm tour. We invited the local um, school staff in, the producers in. VSU brought their bus down. We actually took the school staff out. Um, and they toured the farms. And then from that, a relationship was formed with one of the nutrition directors from, from Mecklenburg County. But then we actually had to go over and do a presentation for their, um, for their um, superintendent and other people from the school to kind of prove what we were doing and talk about what we were going to do. We, we fed them a meal, brought local uh, producers in. And then from there, the producers even went in the school and did educational programs for the school, for the, for the students. We brought in different produce items and had samplings. We had farmers come in and talk about like how they plant products and how long it takes to harvest. And so it, it was much more in depth and it took a little more time. I felt like than you know, just, it, it just kind of started. It, it took months. That's a good perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Um, um, if I'm sorry, I, I, this is fancy, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to say in my case, I was I inherited um, a fully functioning HCAT <clears throat> and um, it had been, you know, as the word goes, lots of peaks and lots of valleys along the way. <clears throat> I think that what I've experienced um, and I've experienced this in other projects like it also where sometimes um, if leadership changes or if circumstance changes, or also depending on how many roadblocks you experience along the way, your team will often adjust and change. So um, going back to the original comment that Beth made, it's never quite finished. It's always something that is molding. It's always something that's continuing to evolve. And I think that it the, the existing group always it's like a like an old principle, like you can tell what the previous principle put in place once a new one has come in has come in so i've had the benefit of working um right after pat Hawkins, who is an immaculate organizer and just being able to piggyback off of the work that she started and figure out new ways to grow it has been a huge benefit for me but it definitely has come with that period of like team transition thank you for sharing that so we have several people, several school nutrition directors on this panel so um, that started their farm to school. So they were able to get their school on board. For, but for those of you who aren't school nutrition directors, how did you get the school on board to participate in farm to school? Or it might even be worth sharing if the school nutrition directors, if you had to get some extra approval. You know, how did you get that? Um, I'd be happy. I can speak. Okay. Go ahead. Brendan, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say I could speak a little bit to how we got um, in, in Petersburg, at least how we got 
uh, some of the school school folks on board. Uh, and I think the couple of key things were one being able to uh, like use uh, a little bit of like teacher school board language to tie the garden directly to the um, SOL standards, STEAM standards, um, and and essentially be able to say like this matches to SOL like 2.5, 6.3, and just like be able to give all of those things that make it like a valid program. Um, and then the other aspect that was useful for us was essentially being like, uh, this is going to require zero extra effort on the part of teachers that are already overworked and underpaid. Like, we're going to take care of the garden. We're going to come in. You just give us the kids. And if you could stay around to make sure, like, uh, things don't get, like, too wild since we don't know all the kids um, at the time. Um, but basically, yeah, just, like, connecting it to uh, tangible, like, standards and then being able to say this is no extra work on you your kids are just going to get a lot of awesome benefits um and we just need you to give us some time so make it just really hard for them to say no right yeah yeah exactly just like how could you say no to this look at all these standards and your teachers get a break like what, what more could you want i also think that there's two pieces of this program you've got the school nutrition directors which most of them and, and the other directors on there probably would agree the state has been pushing farm to school for for many for the last several years um so most of the school nutrition directors you can get them on board pretty quickly then there's the other piece where it's working with the kids themselves and that may take a little bit more effort but i as to what brendan said i think if you tell them we're giving you this awesome program and you're not going to have to do any of the work other than to make sure that the kids are behaved while this program is going on. That's a pretty easy sell, but a lot of people are like, that can't, that can't possibly be. You're going to, you're going to come in and then it's going to drop on our laps afterwards. So I think that's the sell you have to make to the teachers and the school board as far as that part school nutrition directors, I don't think you have to make much of a, um, and Beth or Mandy, you can certainly weigh in. On, I don't think there's much um, talking into as far as that goes. Yeah, to expand on that, Sandy, like you make a good point that as a school nutrition director, I mean, our motivation is nutrition for kids. So we want to bring the freshest, most, you know, uh, local foods, I think, um, that are affordable and make sense in a school nutrition program. And the most direct way for us to impact that is by procuring and menuing. Um, and that's our easiest way to impact farm to school. But if you want to expand it and you want to provide food system education, nutrition education, tastings, which are important because, you know, you can't really introduce a new food if you haven't allowed kids time to see the food, feel the food, be the food. Um, so in order to do that, then you do have to kind of convince or work with individual schools or, or try to create a comprehensive program that you can insert into schools that, again, looks easy and doesn't look like it's going to create extra work. And that is the bigger challenge um, because you do have some competing agendas and you have um, you know, people that have different ideas about what farm to school means and how they want it to be an influence in their school. Even within the school district itself, you have different personalities running different schools that, you know, you have to deal with those challenges. Uh, uh, speaking to, to Lynchburg, um, the, the, there are competing priorities um, for the academic day. Those seven hours are precious um, to uh, the, the instructors uh, and to the academic leadership. Um, and I have found that, um, presenting the opportunity for after school um, uh, um, clubs or after school um, uh, experiences uh, that will um, onboard kids to um, uh, nutrition and to um, uh, you know, taste testings or, or working on it, working uh, in, a, um, uh, in a garden um, when we, uh, um, combine that with our CACFP program. Um, a lot of our kids don't have a place to go after school. 
um, they're going home to a to a um, an empty house because mom and dad are working. So that has been a way for us to um, uh, to talk to teachers and to talk to um, building leadership. Can we build a program for kids who um, can stay after school? We can feed them, but we can also um, not then infringe on that seven hour academic um, you know instructional day. Lots of thinking outside the box, right? All right, so we're getting close on time, but I don't. I want to definitely tackle these two questions. Perhaps if you're interested, you can answer both in the same response. Um, what's going well and what are the challenges that you've encountered? I'll go ahead. <laughs> Um, so I think what's going well is that we continue to grow and we continue to um, increase our, our, our product list and, and what we are introducing to children and that um, our partnerships continue to grow. And I think that conversations around farm to school, you know, locally and statewide and nationally continue to grow. So those are really great positives. Um, the challenges that I encountered mostly were not buy-in from stakeholders, uh, parents, school board. Um, once I was much like Beth, the leader of wanting to do farm to school in my first year, I was the initial team. When I said to people, this is my agenda, this is what I want to do, they were extremely supportive. It was my staff. Um, I found that the staff was the most challenging. Um, change is not easy. We all know that change is hard. And so when you're trying to bring something new and something that may appear to be uh, more challenging, you'll get some pushback. Um, and so that was, you know, that was definitely, um, I think, the, the, the biggest challenge. And we've, we've continued to grow the program. We've continued to provide professional training so that we make it easier for them to, to, you know, do some scratch cooking and to use these local foods in the menus a little more efficiently and easy and attractive to kids. Um, but that's, that's, that was the most challenging part for me. Thank you. Um, I would say in the, the six months that we've had the uh, Petersburg Oasis Youth Farm, I mean, we've seen already over 150, 200 scholars in that time. And as I mentioned before, certified summer and junior master gardener. So um, the exposure was, was probably one of the things that I would, I would celebrate the most. The fact that people actually know that this, this youth farm exists, that it's uh, designed and developed and dedicated to the youth of Petersburg. Um, and the word is, you know, spreading in that regard. And I think that's super important. Like just speaking about what, what Big Sis Beth said, um, she said that it started with her, right? It started with an intention, it started with her being inspired. And that led to her inspiring somebody else. And I'm getting inspired now listening to the conversation. We're talking about that, right? And I'm, I'm sitting next to one of our volunteers now who's been out here since about eight o'clock this, this rising, helping us on the farm. And I had my four uh, young children out here as well helping out. Um, so I'm thinking like, okay, you keep inspiring the community and it, it, it'll start looking like that. It'll start looking like us being able to afford staff, right? That could be here for six to eight hours a day and, you know, handling the challenges that need to be handled. Um, so in saying that, one of the largest challenges is uh, securing funds to be able to afford some of these big ideas and intentions that we have established for this space. You know, fortunately, we've been able to access grants and do our partnerships with, you know, people like Happily Natural, and uh, the agrarian trust, we were able to actually get the land that we have the farm on. But now that there's a demand, right now that kids are coming back several times, you know, wanting a different experience, wanting new experiences, we need to be able to afford that opportunity for them. And that might be in the form of being able to hire or employ people, first educate them, right? Because they're educating other people. So educate them so that they can be employed and they can educate the youth on the space, but as well as, you know, like uh, Big Sis Ann gave us uh, about 10, 15 hand shovels um, a couple of weeks ago. They've all been used already, right? People have already started using them and the gloves. So just to be able to provide that experience, that type of experience to, to, to more of the youth um, in one shot. And that challenge comes in, you know, we live in America, you got to be able to buy that stuff, you got to be able to afford those things. So, um, you know, but just knowing that the energy is there, that the demand is there, that gets us super excited because we see that growing into students going back to their schools and saying, hey, we want a school garden. Hey, we want to try, we want to eat tomatoes like we had from the farm in lunch, right? And then it just, you know, it makes it full circle. 
Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure it's incredibly rewarding when you have someone have an experience on the farm and then come back to want more experience. That's phenomenal. And thinking about exposure for support, I think that's a great point. You know, how do you get that support? Do you, you know, do you contact local news outlets? Do you, um, you know, blow up social media? How do you garner some kind of momentum? So those are other things to to really think about. Um, I want to tackle this last question real quick, and then I want to make sure we have time for our questions. But so as far as Virginia Cooperative Extension, specifically the Family Nutrition Program, we support farm to school by, like I said, mentioned earlier, educating youth on the importance of nutrition and nutrition education. And we do that both in the schools and out of schools. And Joanne, if you wouldn't mind, from an ag agent perspective, how can an ag agent um, from Virginia Cooperative Extension support farm to school? As an ag agent, we support farm to school by working with the producers to answer questions when they're growing their crops as far as insect and disease issues. Um, also, as an ag agent, I have been very supportive of them with making connections, like I said, with Mecklenburg County Schools and other schools to try to um, promote the program, to do educational program in the schools with the students, as well as with staff as to why this is important. Um, also reaching out as an ag agent to, I feel like one of the bigger issues we've dealt with is a lot of the produce that we're talking about selling is grown in the summer when school is out. And so trying to make networking connections for procurement, which I know we worked some with 4P on that. And, um, but, I, but I feel like as an ag agent, there are lots of roles we play in that. And, and it primarily one of them would be probably assisting producers to produce a healthy, viable crop that they can sell. Does that answer kind of what you're looking for, Janelle? Yeah, that's great. You okay. answered it and then some. Yeah, thank you so much, Joanne. Well, I want to, um, again, thank our panelists um, and open, open it up to any questions. So feel free to pop them in the chat or if you can just unmute yourself and ask a question to any or all of our panelists. Well, I, I have a question, and I think this is related to the funding issue that um, that Tyrone talked about. Um, how do we how as like trying to work with your team? Um, how do you know where to go to even find the funding and uh, just, you know, because there's a lot of different uh, funding sources out there. I know a lot of times the strength of grants is like when you have a lot of partners on the grant, but yet being able to channel those funds, like I know probably schools may have issues with being able to be the, the organization submitting a, a grant proposal or something. So how have you all dealt with that? I kind of would love to hear from the school nutrition folks, but then also folks like the P, P Hops, how you all did it. Um, well, I can answer from the P Hops perspective. Um, we knew that we, being that we are a part of the Virginia Tech family, we had some additional resources. So we have developed a grants and finance working group, which meets twice a month. And we invite our partners to join us in this meeting, as well as a lot of our own um, members of the group where we all investigate funding opportunities. We kind of help each other and lend support where we can as far as application processes and deadlines and things like that. So that has been um, both a really great way to build partnership, um, make sure that we are writing, literally writing in grant applications, ways that we can continue partnership and continue to support one another, um, as well as us being aware that we do um, there is an amount of privilege that comes along with being a part of a larger institution. So making sure that any organization that is interested that may not have the same access to some of the information that we have is able to join us. Um, I'll, I'll be... I would be I'd be leaving remiss if I didn't mention the Justin J, J the Justin J Davis Heart Foundation. Um, they are an incredible example of this of a partner that has gotten resources through our um, grants and finance working committee. And even myself, I've learned so much about the grant writing process and have been able to write um, a couple of successful grants because of my exposure to this work group. Thank you. 
And uh, I popped it in the chat, but if you are interested in funding as well as evaluation, our webinar next month on the 2nd of May will cover those two topics in a lot more detail. I'd be happy to answer from the school side how I kind of take care of funding, um, especially you know with, with specifics to purchasing the local foods. Um, I've received grant funding. I've sought out grant funding that allows for the purchasing of food. Not all grants you know, that support farm to school allow for specific food purchasing, but I've um, funded local foods through um, Whole Kids grants, through um, grants from the Mid-Atlantic uh, Food um, Access Alliance, and through um, the Chef Ann Foundation. So I've been able to purchase some local goods through grants, I've purchased or, or received some local goods from teaching farms by donation, just because they want to be able to provide this food. And I think, you know, you can seek that out from the right organizations. I don't think that it's fair to seek them out from farmers who are, who are you know, looking for a profit, um, but there are nonprofit organizations that grow to teach. So those are great places to, to go and ask for, you know, maybe donations for small tasting. And then of course, creative menu planning so that you have spaces in your menu where your center of the plate makes sense that it's it's you know the cost is a little less so that you can afford later on a you know a more pricey center of the plate and don't forget um you can ask, if you can always ask um with 4p they've been a great um they've been a great help to help with farm to school uh, one of the things that they did was at one of our uh, regional meetings was actually tour their facility, which was kind of eye opening for me. But also, they're willing to work with us. They usually send out, you know, items that they have <clears throat> performed to school. And sometimes they fit into our program and sometimes they don't. But we work with them and say, okay, well, you know, we really can't use all of this product for one school, but maybe can we get this product? They're willing to work with you. Don't be afraid to ask. That's the big thing. Uh, the worst that can they can say is no, we can't do that. But a lot of times the answer is yes, or you come to some sort of agreement um, between the two of you. So I think it's worth asking the question. And sometimes the question you ask may be something that the other person hadn't considered, right? So opening up a new possibility. Thank you. And I want I want to echo that. Um, you know, being the 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 one, the customer, um, you know, we have to recognize that we have some power as the customer. Um, and if you have a commercial distributor, um, you know, pressing them, continuing to ask for, you know, I am looking for you know, local foods, um, you know, local produce, when you, you, and, and when you're writing your, for us, I have to write a formal RFP, um, you know, to uh, make that um, uh, procurement contract, you know, with a distributor. And there are ways to write into your um, solicitation um, preference towards, uh, you know, local, local foods. I just did, I, I, I didn't want, you um, uh, the group here that may not be aware that uh, school nutrition programs are self-funding. Um, we don't receive any uh, local funding. We're not part of the general operating fund of um, the school division. Um, you know, our 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 revenues are generated um, through federal reimbursements for the meals that we serve that meet the federal meal pattern. Um, so, uh, Sandy and Amanda and I we really uh, operate as small businesses. Um, I have not sought um, uh, food uh, grants, grants that allowed me to procure uh, food. But what, um, as Amanda was saying, when we plan our menus, we have to cost those menus. Um, and so we do have a, a, a certain price point that we have to look at. But in being strategic and planning menus, you can allow for a day or two of the week to um, uh, to incorporate a higher um, you know, price point of uh, fruit vegetable um, if you're strategic in the rest of the week, you know, having having lower food costs. Um, so it's a puzzle, but again, that commitment um, uh, drives us to make it work. Thank you. So we're getting close to time, but we do have time for one or two more questions. If anybody has a question for um, a panelist or all of the panelists. 
for that, I just want to remind everybody of the resources that are in the chat for the um, Farm to School um, toolkits, both Virginia and USDA. And I also posted um, the link for um, the Learn, Grow, Eat, Go uh, curriculum for junior master workers. Thank you, Ann. This, this is Tom. Hi, everyone. I, I joined a little late. Apologies, but I work closely with Devin on the 4P Foods team. I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of all the farmers you're helping with this program. I've been doing this work for 12 years now, uh, and this is the first year that we're really doing farm to school in a meaningful way. And it's because of this sort of collaborative approach that's happening, because for so long there was this sort of chicken and egg struggle where small farms, local farms, they need to sort of grow in capacity and, and volume. Uh, and it's hard to get that without commitments at scale. And at the same time, you know, some large schools need all of the infrastructure and the supply to sort of work in a meaningful way. So it was either we had one, we had farmers, but maybe not the demand, but we had demand, but not enough farmers willing and able to sort of play this long game. Uh, so this really is the first time where it's happening in concert and this collaborative sort of long view on this is it's really making a very big difference. So thank you uh, on behalf of the farming community here in Virginia. It's working. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for what you do with 4P um, and for being here as well. Yeah, of course. Does anybody have a last question? All right, I want to be very mindful of our time. Um, and for those of you that popped in late that might not know Amber Velotten, she is a co-director of our state farm to school team um, with Stuart. I think Stur Stuart had something he had to jump off for, but I want to make sure I introduce them. And I want to thank our panelists for taking the time because we there was some prep involved in this as well. So I appreciate all of your time and your consideration and your thoughtful input for this content um, and for sharing your experiences, both the good and the rough, right? Those are important too. Um, and thank you for attending. For those of you who came today, maybe this is your um, first meeting talking about farm to school. So hopefully you've left with some information. Again, we'll be posting this on, um, we'll post the whole series of these webinars that you can view um, and they go right along with the toolkit. So from Ann and I and the rest of the farm to school team, thank you again for being here. Um, we appreciate you. Thank you.